observe the discussion. Well, monkey boy now. Yeah, but I want like more intelligent parties. Such as? Uh, such as Marco, Nicklot, maybe Eunuch. <laughs> hmm. Okay. I don't know who Eunuch is. Maybe we can get Mason in. I can get... I doubt Marco would be on. Look, I'm gonna run like an outline of the argument before we discuss it later, okay? I'll just tell you about it so you can like be prepared at least. Uh, okay. So this is gonna be a categorical like nuance uh, like in the progression of the argument, right? <laughs> Granting that we've established like some kind of a positive ontological item whose existence is of probabilistic certitude, there's gonna be the first category of ascription or like just describing properties, right? First one is gonna ascribe or demonstrate that this positive ontological item is necessary, and then it's gonna demonstrate that it's material, immaterial, transcendent, not composed, eternal, and then unlimited in its features and have a limited value making attributes. It's so you're running an ontological argument. Uh it's gonna be like a stage two argument. I don't know how you can like particularly categorize it. But anyways, and there's gonna be which is the part that you would find interesting. Because I don't think, like, the first part is going to be very interesting or even, like, disputable to a certain extent. The second category is what I call doxastic attribution, wherein I will argue that um, you can hold the belief that this, like, necessary being has certain... What does doxastic mean? Doxastic as in uh, relating to beliefs or, like, relating to our beliefs. Relating to our beliefs. So yeah. there's going to be some relating to our beliefs argument? What beliefs yeah. does it relate to? Uh, what do you mean? What category of beliefs? No, you said that it's going to be doxastic, which is reducible to relating to beliefs. And that's going to be the argument. So what, are, what, what beliefs does it relate to? It relates to theistic beliefs, obviously. Oh, so you're not actually talking about like general beliefs. You're just talking about your own beliefs, okay. No, I'm talking about general beliefs. Look, believe <laughs> Wait, general me. beliefs like across like me and you? Like those sorts of beliefs? Look, are you, are you saying that I don't share like a theistic belief with some other individual? I didn't say that. I just thought that you meant like general beliefs as in like shared amongst the general parties in the dispute. That's Look, what I thought you meant. Oh, I see. Okay. Okay, I yeah. took it that you meant that like this belief is shared with some other individual. Okay. Obviously, that's no. not going to be a general belief. I assume, right? Uh-huh. Okay, okay. so... So you have some argument shared amongst theists that's going to commit like a naturalist to the proposition God exists or something? Look, this, this argument isn't shared amongst theists. This is an argument I've already formulated. But look, the goal you of the argument... It was. <laughs> no, no, no. It relates to beliefs shared amongst theists. It relates to such as the belief that God is omnipotent or like... Yeah, God but you said dogmatic, then you said argument, right? No, I said dogmatic attribution. What is that? Oh, okay, I'll, um, I was explaining to you. But anyways, look, um, after we establish that this positive ontological item <clears throat> obtains a, an unlimitedness of value-making attributes, I will argue that it what is... What does that mean? Be, okay. Value-making attributes, is that confusing to you? Yeah, I'm not really sure if I know what that means. Uh, it just means, like, axiological properties. <laughs> what does that mean, axiological properties? Oh, uh, okay. Do you know what value is? Um, I think so. Okay. No, you, okay. Like, I asked you for a definition, then you reduce it down to something that sounds just as complex, if not more. Right. Uh, okay, yeah. Well, so, I don't think I, think I have, like, a conceptual account of what it is, but I assumed you would be aware of what it is. But I guess I can, like, invoke some characteristics of it, or, like, examples, right? So, value-making properties such as uh, benevolence, that's going to be like a morally value-making property. Okay. okay. Is there, uh, are there like other value-making properties? Like omnipotence, sure. omniscience, that uh, sort of thing? Do you think, well, do you think, do you take knowledge as being like reducible to some kind of a value property? I still don't know what that is. I think like maybe I know what that is. Like a property one, a subject has that's valuable or something. I'm not sure uh, if those sorts of things exist, but 
like maybe for the sake of argument i can grant it look you can you can just say you can just say these are these things are properties right we don't need to complicate things here you can just say they're properties and the argument just works perfectly i think but look the arguments so it's gonna invoke okay it's gonna demonstrate that it is uh justified to hold the belief that this positive ontological item possesses like a set of properties or attributes right and this i will do via like complex means that would wait be... say that I'll, say that all again sorry i got distracted yeah i said it's going to demonstrate uh that it is justified to hold the belief that uh like this positive ontological item obtains this set of, a set of properties a particular set of properties right okay so you establish that there's some sort of necessary thing mm -hmm. but then how do you establish that these properties are ascribed to the necessary thing uh, look, you're not okay. This is why I I showcase like a categorical nuance here. You wouldn't be. I don't know what that is. Okay, you wouldn't be demonstrating that these properties are ascribed to the positive ontological item. You would be saying that it is justified to hold the belief that certain properties are ascribed to the item. There's going to be like a distinction between like whether it's inferentially it can... justified. Uh, well, that's going to be contingent on like the theory of justification we're gonna we're gonna discuss, right? Yeah. So, what theory of justification? Well, I hold to PC. I don't know what you hold to. Yeah, I hold to PC. Okay, yeah, perfect. So, yeah, it's just an application of PC that you'll you'll see later. Can you give me the application now? Uh, no. You're going to see it when we... No, debate. okay. Why do you need it now? No, I just don't see, like, why this value-making properties would be ascribed to this necessary thing. So it sounds like see, you could describe like, other things to okay. it. You wouldn't see that these properties are like ascribed to the thing. You would see that it is reasonable to hold the belief that these properties are ascribed. There's going to be a distinction there. Oh, so it's just like as reasonable as just describing like, oh, it's all evil. It doesn't know nothing. Like it's just as reasonable as that. Oh uh, no, there's going to be no, well, on plan? the PC, like there's going to be defeaters, or rather, there's going to be reasons. What's to, the defeater? Hold on, there's going to be reasons to be inclined to believe that a set of, a set of properties. Are going to be uh, like maybe veridical under the veridical. What, what do you mean by that? It what did you say veridical? I don't know what that means. Yeah, I said veridical. What does that mean? It just means that like a set of properties are going to be favorable over another set of properties. Yeah, okay, that's just your claim, though. I'm not asking you to restate your thesis. I'm asking you for the argument. Yeah, you look. You'll see the argument later. I'm just running an, an outline of. Oh like, uh, yeah. By the way, what modal scope? What modal scope? You said. Yeah. You said necessary. No, 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 oh, uh, yeah, just like the modal status of being necessary. Like you want a definition for that? I know what it is. I mean, it couldn't have been otherwise. Not possible yeah. for it to not be the case, right? Mm -hmm. um, but I don't know what modal scope it's under. Is that like logical modality? Uh, is there going to be a distinction between logical and metaphysical modality? There is, yeah. Can you articulate the distinction? I think metaphysical modality to have like some like set characteristics of metaphysical principles. Logical modality is just fixed under like uh, the laws of logic. Okay, that doesn't tell me much about the distinction and how it may be applied to this. What do you think is going? Let me give you an example. Yeah. So under metaphysical modality, maybe you could say like x nilo nilo fit is impossible. But under logical modality, you'd have to give a contradiction if you say anything's impossible. Oh, I see. Okay. No, I don't think I, I don't think this modality of the logical sense in the sense that it probably it's negation. Well, let me think. Well, maybe under other arguments, you would have like the negation that the proposition that God exists would entail a contradiction, or would not entail a contradiction, right? Okay, then uh, I, don't, maybe, I don't see why he would be necessary, then just God would just be contingent then. Look, uh, I haven't, well, I haven't conceptualized whether like this argument entails that or not, whether it entails like logical or metaphysical morality. Yeah, but and then like, think about like it's not gonna, it's not gonna be good enough for your claim, right? To just say, well, probably he has these attributes. You'd have to say necessarily he has these attributes in all possible worlds. No, 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 no. Look, look, there's gonna be an ontological level of so ontological separation between the property bearer and the properties, right? And it's gonna be contingent on whether you think, well, the 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 initial argument establishes that the property bearer is a necessary existence, right? But there's an ontological distinction between like the property bearer and its properties. Its properties may be contingent, but under my view, they aren't, right? Because I take the, I take it that okay, the right. Hold on, so I take you'd have, that to, you'd have bearer, to tell me. Um, well, you're Christian, right? Yeah, you'd have to tell me basic things like why something like the Trinity wouldn't be contingent, right? Like three, like it could have been four conceivably under conceptualist mm -hmm, modality. Okay, sure, sure. Then it would be it would have been the case that it could have been the case, right? So yeah, that would be the, contingent. The, the, and then there's other properties. Um, 
well, under any kind of modality, you're going to get like pretty much all of the properties of God are going to be contingent. So that okay. just makes me think, well, then God's not really like necessary then. Okay, look, that's, that's fine. You may, uh, I mean, look, I understand your objection and I'll respond to it later. Okay. Do you need to know something else about the arguments? Hello. Oh, okay. I'm going to take that as a no. Okay. Okay, so let's start with, um, as I explained earlier, there's going to be a categorical nuance in the argument tree. So let's start from uh, what I call rationally inferred attribution, which is just going to be ascribing certain properties to this uh, like ontological formula via uh -huh. like some kind of an a priori inference, right? Okay, so the first, first property is going to be necessity. That's this positive ontological item. That's a property? Ah, uh, well, that's going to be a modal property, don't you think? It's a modal operator. That's like kind of like saying, well, negation's a property or something. That's kind of weird. It's like but a truth can, functional operator, right? Look, it's fine if you, don't, if you don't want to categorize it as a property, right? But the argument just, uh, I think, follows. Okay, so why, is, why are you describing necessity as a property of this entity? Ah, uh, look, because I had the conception that necessity would be a, a, like an ascribable property to things, right? If you disagree right, that's with what that, you think. I'm asking what's the argument that you ascribe necessity as property? What's the argument? I haven't formulated a conceptual account for the argument. I don't even think it's going to be important for the dialectic going on here. Okay, so you don't have an actual argument why this is necessary. No, I do. Okay, what is it? Okay, go to syllogisms. Well, oh, you're okay. going to be, of course, you're going to be granting the conclusion of the arguments we had yesterday, or rather, two days ago, I think. When did we have an argument? Like you were here when Joseph, when Joseph and I were debating correct. Yeah, but I don't know if I'm going to grant that. Here, let me see if I can find this. Look, we're here to discuss stage two. <laughs> <laughs> okay, if a positive ontological item is of probabilistic incertitude, then there's obtained some degrees of probability whereby the item does not exist. Um, I'm not sure if I agree with that. Two, if there obtains not... Okay, what is this? Why do you have okay, eight premises? Let's okay. What's the argument for premise one? Okay, for positive ontological items of probabilistic incertitude, then there obtains some degree of probability whereby the item does not exist. That's just follow analytically, right? You're just saying that if some occurrence is probabilistically uncertain, that means uh, it may probably be the case that like some occurrence is not obtained, then there is some degree of probability where uh, like the item just is ontologically uh, like inexistent, right? Why? We, I don't see why you would disagree with that. They're just as well. Look, back. you can just have like an epistemic limit or something where you don't epistemically know if the item is uh, what the probability obtains, right? But the probability could still be zero, right? Well, can you repeat? What so you said? could be epistemically limited. So that's a counterexample. Yeah, can you repeat the counterexample? So it could be the case that you're epistemically limited, where you don't know the probability, right? Oh, there isn't a probability, like, but you just don't know. You're like, oh, I don't know what the probability is, but yeah, okay. it's 0%. Look, there's gonna be, it's going to be granting that some positive ontological item is of probabilistic incertitude, which means that like, some occurrence may not obtain, right? If it may not obtain, then it may not exist, right? Yeah, sure. Yeah, okay. So you don't disagree with the first premise. Go ahead. Yeah, so if all you're saying is that like, you have this thing that you don't know, and it may obtain or it may not, so it may not obtain. It's like, okay, well, yeah, you have a contingent thing. Okay. So what? Okay. What do you mean, so what? Is that, so is you... that all it's saying? Yeah, obviously. I As thought I the said... premise was trying to say that if you didn't know, like you were uncertain about something, no, then it would, follow that, it would follow that um, there's a probability it doesn't exist. I don't see how that follows. 
Oh, did the, okay, did the word incertitude, uh, like, produce some kind of a confusion? Uh, this isn't addressing, like, any, any epistemic status. This is addressing... Uncertain? Whether... Wait, so no. when someone invokes the word uncertain, you don't take that to me like, oh, I just don't know? Oh, uh, well, incertitudes, the way I used it, is just identical to, like, there being a probability of this ontological item not obtaining, right? Oh, well, if you just mean it in a different way that no one actually means, then sure, it would be the case. Okay. But if you mean it in a way that most people actually mean whenever they invoke those words, then yeah, it wouldn't be the case. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, that's my response to P1. Let's look through the rest. Um, look, is your Okay, so let, let us establish that you agree with P1, correct? I don't think so. It depends on what you mean by incertitude. I just explained to you, though. So, okay, so if a positive ontological item is a probabilistic, did you say unlikelihood when yeah. you said incertitude? Mm hmm then there obtains some degree of probability whereby the item does not exist. And by some, you mean at least like 1% or more? Then yeah, that's trivial. But if, yeah, I thought you meant yeah. something else by incertitude. So okay. No. If that's all you mean, then yeah. So P2. Okay. If there obtains not some degree of probability whereby an item does not exist, then that item cannot fail to exist under contingent circumstances C, such that C ontologically undermines X. What does that mean? Okay. If there obtains some degree of probability whereby an item does not exist. It just means that if there is uh, like some kind of a likelihood whereby the item does not obtain, and by obtain, I just mean obtain as a positive ontological item, then the item uh, cannot be undermined by contingent circumstances, right? It may not, it, whatever contingent circumstances may arise, this ontological item necessarily exists. This is also like a trivial point. I'm not sure if I'm following. Okay. So look at necessary existence is necessary in as much as it can all be otherwise, correct? Right. Yeah. And the way it could be otherwise is they're emerging a set of contingent circumstances ontologically undermining this, uh, like this thing, correct? What does that mean? It just means that there are certain cir circumstances or state of affairs that may arise that would, uh, like, that would, I guess, disallow the existence of such a thing, right? Wait, so as long as it's possible that something undermines something necessary, then it's contingent? Uh, yeah, look, if you take... Yeah, necessary... well, then God's going to be contingent, right? Hold or on. you're you going to take... have to give me the contradiction with that happening with God. Look, you're not following. If you take some necessary object to be equivalent to, like, an object existing in all possible worlds, and I say, in some possible worlds, there obtains, like, some state of affairs that actually, uh, like, that actually, uh, let's say, negates this object's existence, right? That's no longer gonna, going to be a necessary object, correct? I don't, I don't know. Okay, you don't know or you don't understand what I'm saying? Are you going to respond? Okay, I'm back. What were you saying? Yeah, I said, uh, okay. Are you said you don't know? That means you're not understanding what I'm saying or something else? Well, maybe it's the case that if you have a necessary existence, right, and then you have something that undermines it, like it's possibly the case that something undermines it, and it isn't necessary because it's not going to obtain it in all possible worlds, but are you using just like logical modality for this? Oh. Uh, well, look, it's going to be contingent on how you understand the distinction, I think. But it, it, look, this... What's the answer to my question? I said it's going to be contingent on how you understand the distinction between logical as opposed to metaphysical modality. Okay. So by logical modality, I mean fixed under the laws of logic. So if something has a contradiction, it's impossible. By metaphysical, I'm, like that depends on the metaphysical principles you invoke, but it's going to be something different. Would you agree that it's logical modality? Uh, look, I already told you that I haven't like, formulated the conceptual accounts whether this is going to be a ca categorized onto logical or metaphysical modality. But I don't think this Okay, then I just don't know what you're talking about then. Look, does this pertain to an argument against uh, the second premise or not? Yeah, because you invoked a modal Okay, word, so, right? when you you say, so when you say, um, I don't know whether this premise can be categorized onto like, talking about logical modality or metaphysical modality, that's going to be an argument against the premise? That's right. Okay, why, okay. what is the dialectical nature of the arguments? Basically, uh, well, if you're like invoking these words, but no one actually knows what you mean, then 
it's not going to have any force, right? It's kind of just like saying blah, blah, blah in an argument. And I'm like, well, what does that mean? And you're like, oh, I haven't hashed it out yet. It's like, okay, well, well I guess we can't really go anywhere from that. Okay, look, let's just, let's just say what I mean by look, contingent circumstances, good circumstances that uh, I guess may be otherwise, right? Mm -hmm. Now, is that going to be like categor categorically integrated under logical or metaphysical modality under your view? Right. Well, I don't, I don't believe in metaphysical modality, so it would be logical modality. Okay, then go ahead. Is that going to be... Uh, what do you mean, go ahead? I thought it was your argument. No, I mean, do you object to the premise now, after I explained it? So it is logical modality, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so then I think like God would be contingent under that, right? Oh uh, no, God. we're still talking about the premises and the arguments. Well, he, well God would definitely would be contingent under logical modality. I'm not even really sure where this argument's going, so... Okay. Let's let's hear you talk about the arguments, right? Let me see if I can just understand where this is going, and then I'll give a response. There does not obtain some degree of probability whereby f does not exist. What? Okay, can you like just like sum up like where the direction of where this argument's going? Because I like don't see it. Okay, this argument just wants to, I think, display the trivial like implication between what we've what or what you're going to grant, right? That some ontological positive ontological item is probabilistically uh it cannot fail to exist right or probabilistically certain right that this implies or trivially implies rather that like this positive ontological item is a necessary being or like a necessary existent right so we're just gonna we're just gonna i guess fill the gap between like, probability and modality okay so sorry my like dogs racking up can you say that quickly one more time no no <laughs> okay yeah, so the fuck? Here, let's take a look here. Um, there does not obtain some degree of probability whereby f does not exist. Okay, wait, do you actually have the form of the argument? Do I have Like, in form? logical form? This is an in logical form? No, I mean, like, you can in have, symbols, like, substitution instance. Yeah, a necessary okay. being is necessary. Yeah, I agree. Okay, so, um, so you would have to say uh, like, do you have it in logical form? Do I have it in symbols, you mean? No. Yeah, that's right. No, I don't. Maybe I could symbolize it. Is it is it unclear to you? I mean, yeah, for the most part. This just sounds like a lot of gibberish. Look, that four really follows from... Okay. Things mean. Four just follows from one and three by Modus Tollens. There does not attain some degree of probability where F does not exist. Mm-hmm. Is that modus... Wait, did you say modus tollens? Yeah, P4 is derived from 1 and 3 from modus tollens. 1 and 3. Okay, if a positive ontological item is of improbabilistic certain certitude, then there obtains some degree of probability whereby that item does not exist. There does not obtain some degree of probability whereby F does not exist. Do okay, you I'm disagree to... that that's modus tollens? <laughs> I'm trying to figure out if it is. Oh my gosh. Does somebody post where the argument is? It's in syllogism. Yeah, okay, but you're going to have to, like, get all this gibberish out and, like, explain what all this these terms mean. So maybe we could go one by one or something. Yeah, um, we were just doing that, right? Are we, yeah. were we doing something else? Yeah, we were doing something like that. We, I thought we were going premise by premise. So, yeah, then why would you say P3, that? Look, why would so you say you that we should don't have a do that? that? Look, why right, did you, you say that? Okay. That's okay. Why, why did you say that? I don't know what you really mean. Okay. Right. All right, but why did you say that we should go through the arguments? Premise by premise, if you were already doing that. I meant we should do a semantic analysis of the terms. Okay. We were, so we, your claim is that we weren't doing that. <laughs> so did you want to do that, or did you like want to stick on meta? And then it's like, fine if you're scared, but we can go yeah, through one by one if you want. Okay. Okay, so P3, explain it. Okay, P3, there does not obtain some degree of probability. Or probability. Okay, it just means that it is uh, probabilistically certain that F obtains, right? So this is going to be the negation of that proposition, which just means that there is no uh, like extent of probabilistic reasoning whereby you may derive that F does not obtain or does not exist, right? Yeah, why is that confusing to you? I don't see, like, why is that confusing? But it's like, okay, so it's impossible for F to not obtain. Is that what your claim is? Impossible as in, uh, like, morally impossible or, like, logically impossible? I don't know what you mean. Aren't those, like, the same thing? Uh, under your view, yeah. 
then yeah. not, ne- not necessarily under my view, right? So what's the answer? The answer whether this is uh, like impossible. Right. Yeah, I could just say yeah. Wait a minute. So your conclusion is F is a necessary existence, but then one of your premises is F is impossibly. It's impossible for not for F to not be the case. That's just to say that it's necessary in a different way. That just looks like a question begging argument. Like you know no, what the didn't. analytical equivalent of necessary is, right? It's impossible Look, it's, for it to not be the case. Yeah. Impossibly not. Not mm-hmm. possibly. Yeah. No, not you possibly realize, not. You be. realize that before. Yeah. Is derived from P1 and P3, right? That's first thing. Secondly, this argument, as I said, is just like a list of trivial implications. Okay, I'm well, trying I wasn't to fill... hold on, hold on. P4, right? I, I just questioned P3. And yeah, it is trivial if something's impossible for it to not be the case, and it's necessary. But then that's just going to be question begging, right? Uh, look, it's not. It's not going to be question begging because there's going to be like a semantic uh, distinction that I thought you would adhere to. This uh, is why I even wrote like the wait, argument. What do I adhere argument. to? What I thought you would distinction do I adhere to? Yeah, I thought you would be like committed to some kind of a semantic uh, separation between like some positive ontological item being a probabilistic certitude and the same item being necessary, right? So this is why, like, I here, wrote we can this. go through if it's probabilistically certain in a sec. But here, let me just type out in okay. the chat You're gonna why be this is going to be a question begging argument. All right. So if you say not possibly not, that's just to say that it's necessary in a different way. You understand that, right? Like uh, that, that's like modal logic 101. Look, like necessary P is equivalent to not possibly not P. It's yeah. Very like, hard. look, if you watch, do you know Kane B? Just watch his like introductory video on it, dude. It's the analytical equivalent of necessary, right? Okay. So yeah, that's that's kind of the yeah. It would be question begging under that. Account. Okay, so you, okay, so you don't take you don't take it that there is a semantic like separation between those things, right? It's just, yeah, it's just saying the same thing in a different way. Yeah, that's yeah. so okay. That's that's perfect. So you just like you just agree, I guess. With you don't you don't even have to like fill in a gap between like this being uh, or this like item being of probabilistic certitudes and it being necessary. That's fine. Wait a minute. I can dispute the soundness of a question begging argument, right? Like you can say P, therefore P, but by P you just mean like God exists, therefore God exists. It's like okay, well I don't know why I w- why I would accept God exists, right? So I can dispute uh, the truth value of the premise, which is what I'm doing. Ah, uh, look, you're going to be well. If you you are willing to engage in that, you're going to be like diverging the discussion into like some other level of dialectics. No, I'm not. Look, yeah, you like would. you can present a perfectly valid argument that isn't sound, and I reject the truth value of the premise, right? Because you say that the premise is true, but I'm disputing that it's true. Look, are you hey. like understanding what I'm saying here? I'm t- I'm telling you that I wrote like this kind of. Uh, this argument is to list the trivial implications that would fill like the distinction between there being probabilistic certitude of an item and necessity, which I thought that you were that this is like some kind of a distinction that you were committed to. But since you're not, this argument doesn't matter. <laughs> why did he mute up as soon as he said? Okay, what well, what was it that you said that it's not going to matter why? <laughs> oh man, that's funny. So. I just don't know what the argument for three, P3 is. It's almost as if this whole argument is gibberish. Like, I can't even... Like, like, like P3 is literally just question-begging, and that's gonna... Like, P3 is literally the analytical equivalent of the conclusion, right? If you break down what it means, it's literally the equivalent. So this is a question-begging argument. Like, what the hell? <laughs> you just, like, wrote this whole thing where P3 is just the conclusion. Like, what the fuck? Yeah, like, why would anyone be interested in that? It's like, you have all this gibberish where it's like, if P, then Q, Q, then R, like, blah, blah, blah. And then you say... P as like the the third premise, right? Conclusion, like there's like eight more premises. Conclusion is just uh, P. It's like okay, well you just fucking restated it and you just like made it. Blah 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 P therefore P. <laughs> yeah, it's like what? <laughs> this is so dumb. <laughs> is this is this like a supporting argument for some other argument or? Uh, well, I don't know. And then there's other issues like how does he get like oh necessary? There's this necessary existence and then it's God, right? <laughs> I don't get that. Um, this guy's like so stupid. I don't even know what he's doing. But and then earlier on, he said like, "Well, these properties can be contingent, right?" Which is to say, like the properties could have been otherwise. So I'm like, okay, well then, like God's properties aren't. They didn't have to be the way that they are, right? So God is well, actually necessary, right? You can have this necessary well, existence that isn't God. Well, he'll say. I think he he means like he might say that um he might say like some of the properties could are contingent, some are contingent. Um, he might say that. 
But either way, like, that. but then like yeah. God would be contingent. Like, say if God is a mind, um, but this mind is like a property of necessary things. So necessary thing is a mind, and that's a property necessary thing has. Well, then, like, that's kind of weird because then God is just contingent, right? So he hasn't established the conclusion he wants, which is that God is necessary. Well, he might say God like, mind. I don't think. I think he'll just say that the, like, he'll just say that the essential properties are necessary, and the ones that are contingent aren't essential, or something like that. No, I think he. I don't know. I remember he said like all of them are contingent or like most of them are or something i don't know yeah i mean i, don't, I, I presume I, don't I presume he'd say i assume he'd say something like what i'm saying but you know yeah but uh, that's just a question Maggie. <laughs> and i don't understand what the fuck like any of these premises mean <laughs> oh man f is a positive I already told you, this guy's item. a this guy's a gibberator he's just a bad faith gibberator now he's like deafened up. Here, let me see. While he's deafened, I'll try and like symbolize his argument or something. I think I was trying earlier, but then I got to a point where it was it wasn't clear where it was going. I say P implies Q for the first one. This is just like a really funny argument. <laughs> if a positive ontological item is a probabilistic uncertain, then there exists. Okay, yeah, that's. Mm, yeah, okay, that's if then. Then P2. If there obtains not some. If there. Wait, if there obtains not. Okay, so not P. It's good that we have it like out though, so we can like look at this. Oh, wait, no, it wouldn't be not P, it'd be like not R or something. Hello? Yeah, I'm trying to put your argument in logical form right now. Okay. Uh, yeah, the, the question begging like, but, argument. Yeah, the, the main issue is just that this is literally a question begging argument. Yeah, why is it question begging? P3 is the conclusion. Yeah, okay. Why okay. If so if I say if P is necessary, then P is necessary, P is necessary, therefore P is necessary. Is that going to be like a question begging argument? Yes. Obviously. No. The that's fuck? not necessarily the case. <laughs> Literally <laughs> what do you mean? How is that clear? <laughs> question begging? <laughs> Look, I don't think like a set of triviality as displayed in the premise or so, one of the premises necessarily like, entails question begging. Yeah, okay, do you think that's what your argument did? Like, that little example you gave everyone, do you think that's what your argument did? Not identically, no. Please just answer the question. Did I not answer the question? Yes or no. Okay, so then why, then why did you ask me to answer the question if I already answered it? Is it a yes or no? Okay, what did, did you I say? say not? You said not did identically. I don't know what the hell that means. Did it do it, like, close enough? Like... I'll let you, I'll let you <laughs> understand what it means when you when you're out. Oh my god, dude, okay. <laughs> okay. Is it cool? Can I get clearance on the... Uh, what is this argument for again? Shut up, bro. <laughs> like, is the argument just something like... I don't know, is it... Like, I don't get what this argument is supposed to be doing at all. Yeah, you don't have to. Is it like you define God as necessary, and then you show how, if you define God as necessary, that God isn't... I don't really get what the argument is doing. Wait, is this an argument for? I just don't know what you're trying if to do. There contains not some degree of probability whereby an item does not exist. Wait, this is so weird. How the fuck do I even symbolize this? Okay, do you think I forgot where the channel symbolizes. Where's the channel? Oh, okay. Have? Look, I'll send you the mountain. We need to get some context. I'll send you. Uh... Hold on. Yeah, it turns. The thing is, like, um, you need first order logic to formalize this. I don't think it'll work for PL. And that, that might be throwing well, you, you off. Well, you need some now. modal logic. Yeah, you need both modal logic and first order logic because he talk he he does like um he does like universal instantiation, and then he starts talking about a specific object in five. So okay, need, yeah, then I'm not. I'm just not going to fucking symbolize it. 
It's a bit strange. But stuff. at this point, I don't even know if it's a valid argument. Like, maybe it's it is. T- well, actually, it is a valid argument. Because it's like, why are you for? Why are you symbolizing it's one of the most valid arguments out there? Just tell him. Just tell him to give you the form of it. Like he's the one that's writing it. You don't have to do no, the work for him. No, I did. I did, and he said that he didn't have it. Fuck. Oh my god. Okay. Wait, do you have the form of it? Um, telekinetic. I don't have any symbols now. Damn but it, it should be. Okay, I sh- it should be obvious. I don't know why you're so. It's not, dude. All of this is just gibberish. Like no one understands any of this. Okay, just because you don't understand it, that doesn't pertain to like it being invalid, right? I never said that. Yeah, but you're making it like seem. I think the if, claim was it was a question begging, right? Yeah, but now he's yeah. like making the charge of invalidity, which is false. I never said it. No, was he's not saying it's invalid. He's saying he's not sure that it's valid because invalid, we don't know right? what the form is. Look, I never said that it was invalid. All I said was I don't even understand any of it. That was my claim. What okay. the hell? <laughs> Are you suspicious? Oh, by the way, Waffle, the PDF you just sent me, like, what? This is like a blank document, you know? Gosh, what? Dude. It's like a blank document. Okay, maybe I sent you the wrong one. Hold on. Okay, so explain premise four. Okay, hold on. F is a positive ontological item for probability sexuality. Yeah, it just means that, granting that, uh, well, like the arguments uh, Joseph and I discussed, right? Granting that the postulate that is being invoked is correct, and its application onto the argument is also correct, you would have, uh, like, an entailment affirming that this positive ontological item. What is a positive ontological item? It's just something that exists. Are you not familiar with, uh, like, Joe Schmidt's terminology? No. It's just, uh, like, something that obtains. Okay, like so something very... that obtains, and by that you just mean something that exists. Okay. Okay, yeah. so... Wait, Terrence, uh, is this... Arg- so, you just sent me the original thing that we were talking about last time. Is this a supporting argument for the original thing here? Here, I'll send it to Terrence. I, I posted it in the syllogism. But well, we're going through, like, this, like, really... Weird. Hold on. Yeah, but this is just a question begging argument. Like one of the fucking premises. Yeah, no, I see. I see that argument. I'm just saying, is this? So you see the one I posted above that? Um. No. Well, that I thought he was running that argument, but it doesn't look like he is anymore. Okay. Wait. Well, then waffle. So why did you send me the one above? Why did you send me that like uh, modus? Um. Because someone told me um, in that PDF that he was running that, but I guess they were just wrong. No, no, I'm saying Waffle just sent me this in DMs. He said it's for the context. I'm asking, like, why did you send that? Yeah, but it's just well, I just context because no, not no. It turns out saying Waffle would... sent. Oh, okay. Look, yeah, you were, yeah, you were trying to like engage, right? Yeah, I'm saying uh, yeah, but it seems like are you sending this for context because the argument you're giving turns right now supports that one, or is this like a completely different argument? This is a different argument. Okay, so you're just okay. So you're just talking about something else. Okay. Oh. I mean, so to why me, why these... does not wait? So what's the argument for P three? P three? I thought we already. Yeah. Like went over that. Well, no, that's just like question begging. That was kind of the issue. Look, P three, right? It is going mm-hmm. to be granted by the initial arguments. What initial argument? I haven't gone. We haven't gone through your initial argument. I don't know why it's granted. Why would I grant that? Uh, look, we're here. Okay, I thought we we're here to discuss like stage two, uh, dialectics, right? Not stage one. Stage one dialectics. We're just taking it that some. No. Okay, you can just you can just say or grant that what? some stage one <laughs> arguments, some stage one arguments concludes veraciously that uh, like some okay, positive. So then, okay, item. if it relies upon a different argument, you just need to like go through the argument then. We're not going to do that. We already went over there. No? And you were there. So just stop pretending that you're not. Wait, yeah, but I never agreed to any of that. Like, Monkey Boy may have, but why does that follow that therefore I did? Like... <laughs> <laughs> it does, look, it doesn't follow. Did I say that it followed? You you were saying it as if it was linked in some sort of way. I'm saying that it's not. Okay, but when we came here, what we came here to discuss, was that going to be, like, the dialectic for stage 2 or stage 1? It can be both. No, it cannot be both. 
Why? <laughs> I mean, it seems like a stage one. Typically, a stage one argument is going to include that there's some type of necessary being. Like our messages, right? Yeah, this, and, oh yeah, also, that this does seem like a stage one. Yeah, that's right. You said <laughs> this seems like a stage one? Yeah, well, look, because you're trying to say there's a necessary existence, right? Stage one typically does that, and then stage two is like, okay, well, this has to be God. For no, whatever yeah, reason. That's false. Stage that's literally true. That that yesterday you agreed. What the hell are you talking like, about? Like, literally... What's stage one? Dem okay. Can you... Question. Can you stop talking? Like, you're not... You're not a part of this, sir. <laughs> Holy crap. Okay, I'll just let you in turns talk, and then... Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. You're gonna do that. Look, what's okay, stage, so what stage one is doing? I don't know what doing. the argument for Peter is. It's just demonstrating an existence of something, great. Right? But if you're gonna ascribe, like, some mortal status of that thing, such as necessity, it's gonna be, like, something different, dialectically different, at least, right? Yeah, and when I asked you about the modal scope, you didn't have anything for that? Uh, the modal scope of, like, before, you said? The entire argument. Look, I'm not concerned whether you categorize as metaphysical or logical. <laughs> it doesn't seem to pertain to it. Oh, you're not? Okay, relevant. so what's the contradiction with negating this, this thing? I said I'm not concerned with, like, categorizing it into either. And I'm not going to okay. be okay, like, so categorizing that, that means, it into like, either. Then we can categorize it into logical. So what's the contradiction? Look, I said I'm not sure whether this can be categorized into either, right? So I don't know why you keep saying that. You said you weren't concerned. Yeah, and I'm also, like, undecided. Picture this. If I say I'm not concerned with whether or not you give me tea or not, that means that I can give you tea and it'd be fine, or I cannot give you tea and it'd be fine. Which means to say that in this sort of, like, symmetrical situation, you can use logical modality and you'd be fine with it, or you cannot use logical modality and you'd be fine with it. Well, I'm going to use logical way, modality, the what's the contradiction? The way you articulated the distinction does not suffice for me to, like, provide any conceptual answer <laughs> as to whether like, this, ca this is categorized under like logical modality or metaphysical modality. Why not? Because, yeah, I just told you why. So it doesn't suffice whether or not you characterize it under logical or metaphysical? Okay, so then it's fine to do either, right? No. Uh, no. Okay, dude, this is just like, I don't know what is up with this, man. Like, okay, so you just don't have a contradiction then with negating this, like, this, say, uh, proposition. I don't know why you keep asking me like the same question, just in a different form. So it's not necessary right? then. So you know, under logical no, you're modality. Okay, okay. Look, your question just pertains to whether like this is categorized under logical modality, right? And I just already told you <laughs> that I'm going to be agnostic on this categorical nuance. So just stop repeating the same question. So you're agnostic on it. Okay. Okay. Then I just don't know what you mean by necessary, right? Uh, <laughs> okay. Are you saying, okay. Yeah. So that's an issue. That's just probably the second issue with the argument. Um, well, and this argument relies upon modality to even get off the ground, so I don't know why you don't have that figured out. You said this argument relies upon modality? Yeah. How does it rely upon modality? Like, as constructed within the premises? What now? I said, how does it rely upon modality as constructed within the premises? Well, because you invoke modal words, like necessary, contingent, possible, that sort of thing. Those are all modal words, and then we need modal scope. Okay, I already... Like, right. <clears throat> like, the semantic conditions that should be met <laughs> it's just that whether I can provide like a definition for either of these terms, right? These the conditions have already been met, right? Uh, but I don't know why you keep. No, they like, haven't. They haven't. I haven't provided a definition of necessary as opposed to contingent. Necessary under what scope, though? No, uh, like I already answered the question. No, you didn't. You said that you're agnostic on it. Is that not enough? How do you mean you answered it? <laughs> Gosh, man. Yeah, by the way, Mason, uh, thank you for that chat, because, like, yeah, that is, like, stage one. How does the argument that uses words like necessary and possible rely on modality? Because that's what I think modality means, right? Like, modality is just the study of what's possible and possible and necessary, right? Right. Do we, do we have another, like, understanding of modality? Do you think so? No. Mm -hmm. I don't. <laughs> Jeez, please. Okay, so wait, look in chat and just look at the argument Mason posted. Do you agree with that? 
What, what chat? Syllogisms. Is that basically what your argument reduces down to? Okay, let me see. So why is P1 the case? Like, I can, I can substitute, like, all sorts of things for P1. I can say, well, if a unicorn is not impossible, then a unicorn is necessary, right? That's not true. I can say, if a perfect island is not possible, then a perfect island is necessary. Uh, or, sorry, if a perfect island is uh, not impossible, then it's necessary. That's not true. Like, I can insert, like, thousands of things into this with substitution instances. And then all of them are false, right? So, like, this antecedent and consequent is just, like, false, right? Because you can have the antecedent true, and the consequent is false. Like, you know that modal contexts are opaque, right? What's that have to do with what I said? You cannot, you cannot perform <laughs> substitution in modal context. What? Look, uh, why not? Bro, are you, like, retarded? Did you have an answer to my question? Yeah, I said that you were retarded. So retarded. that's your answer? Yeah. yeah, you look horrible right now, dude. Like you can just, okay. <laughs> Did you actually want to give an answer? Look, if somebody recorded that, you would be aware of something as basic of there being... So answer my question. Okay. What's well, the answer? Is there a question? So look, yeah, you can't, question. if you can't have substitution instances, that means that you can't substitute... You see that, um, that F right there? That propositional letter? That means that you can't substitute God in for that, right? If you can't have substitution instances. So your argument doesn't work then. Look, my argument does not invoke the modal context you were just invoking. The modal context that you were invoking is going to be like referentially opaque. What's the response to what I just said with substitution instances? Uh, why is it the case that your argument does not cannot perform? What you cannot perform substitution in your argument? In your argument, is that the question? On my arguments? Right. Okay. If you see, if you observe my argument, you would find that there's there's not going to be invoked like any instance of. Uh, like modality in the premises as indexed that's to the I one asked. you've provided it. And that's not true in, in any case. Okay, why I is asked, not true? Why can I not substitute things in for the propositional letters used? If, and if I can't do that, then obviously you can't do that, right? You couldn't substitute God in for those. Uh, did I sub okay, in the argument, did I substitute God for those? Yeah, so look at the argument in chat. So you say like, if F is, here, let's say, if F is a positive ontological item of probabilistic certitude, and by F, I just think you mean like a proposition that you insert, right? And that, mm -hmm. That's a substitution instance. Do you know what that is? Yeah. What is it? What's a substitution instance? Yeah, what is it? Uh, the substitution, I guess, is going to be like we're in, you have some kind of a variable, and you like materialize a variable. So you, you enter a proposition into the variable, right? Yeah. Isn't that what you did? Where? In what, in what context? Go ahead. Yeah, I just, get, I just read it out, right? So, throughout the entire argument that you invoke, you say, like, there does not attain some degree of probability where by F does not exist. And by F, you just mean some sort of, like, proposition, right? The, did I say that? Where does it say that in the argument? Oh, so this isn't actually an argument for God, then. Okay. It's just an argument for some weird letter called F. Okay. That's really cool. Can you tell me where it is said in the argument? <laughs> where if F is substituted? <laughs> Yeah, so you're not actually substituting, like, God exists for F? Okay, well, if that's all you mean, then I mean, like, <laughs> this isn't even an argument for God. <laughs> Holy shit. The argument is, if F is necessary, then F is necessary. No, stop talking. <laughs> oh, yeah, look, if I'm F is necessary, F is too. necessary, I agree. <laughs> right. Okay. Look, what I take to be God is the conjunction of properties, right? And just being a necessary existent is not going to be I didn't ask that. No one asked that. No one asked you that question. Oh my God. I asked you, did do I you say? substitute okay. anything for F? And why can't I? That's what I asked. Okay, I did, I did not substitute anything for F until, like, ultimate stages in the argument, right? And not in that so you argument. Do. So you do. So you do. Okay, there is your answer. So oh that means God. that I can. That means I can substitute unicorns in for F. I can substitute Ghana Lay's perfect island in for F. I can say, well, if it's possible that this is the case, if it's possible that it's not impossible, then it's necessary, right? I can do the same shit. It's called a reduction, okay. right? <laughs> Look, I don't think you realize what is being said. What I'm saying is that I cannot substitute F for God because I don't take God to be identical to a necessary existence. I take God to be identical to a larger set of properties. But you think that it's a necessary condition that God's necessary, right? That's going to be Maybe one not of a component, sufficient one. But I don't take, look, I don't take God to be identical to that singular component. So the substitution for me just but it's doesn't a work. Is it a necessary condition, yes or no? A necessary condition for God? For like the conception of God? 
Yeah. Oh, well, maybe you can have like other views wherein God is not necessary, though I'm not aware of these views. Okay, so it is. So then I can say something like, this version of God, or this conception of God, is actually the real one, only if God is necessary, right? That's mm-hmm. called a necessary condition. Yeah. Right. So then, like, why would that matter, what you just said? Why would that matter? Yeah. I was just invoking that there might be other views, but that doesn't mean necessarily that other views are correct, right? Okay, so you agree that it's necessary, right? But then if it's just like, well, if all you're doing is you're just, like, gibberating all this, like, like BS together, and you're like, oh, well, like, and this is necessary. Like, say, say a conjunction of properties, right? P1 is omnipotent, P2 is um, omniscient, whatever, right? And then PN is, like, it's necessary. Well, I can just do the exact same shit with anything, right? I can just say this unicorn has all those properties. Okay, is that an objection to what I said? It is. Can you explain how it is an objection? Yeah, so if you look in the argument, well, that unicorn would be God. Yeah, no, it wouldn't, right? I meant like if you subtract P1 and P2. It wouldn't. From it. <laughs> okay. Can you, can you, you just explain say necessary. why? Can you explain why? <laughs> is it an objection to what I said? Yeah, so you're running an ontological argument? Are you asking me? You were just asserting it. Oh. Hello? Is it a yes or no? Uh, this argument I posted? I don't, well, yeah, I don't so think... Yeah, so that is an ontological argument. So, if you look at Mason's, like, just, like, reducing to your argument, I asked you if that is your argument, right? Is it? Yeah, and I said no. You said no. Yeah. Okay, then I don't know what the hell your argument is. Okay, just say, that you should just say that you don't understand the argument, and we can just, like, move on. No, I, it's just that I don't think anyone understands anything that you're saying. Uh, I'm not so sure about that. Maybe some people. No, I'm pretty. I'm pretty sure. Said. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. You're pretty <laughs> sure. How are you sure? It just take like five minutes to disambiguate it, and then I think it'll be. Yeah. Okay. We can go through. Um, possible ontological item. You by that you mean existence. Probabilistic incertitude. What do you mean by that? Probabilistic incertitude. Yeah. Uh, it just means that. There's going to be like some degree of probability whereby the like the item just does not exist, right? Some conceivable degree of probability, at least. Probability whereby item doesn't exist. Okay, there does not obtain some degree of probability. Okay, who did? Let's take a look here. So, if there obtains not some degree of probability whereby an item does not exist, that item cannot fail to exist under contingent circumstances. Yeah. So, did you like look? This is just like a question making argument, right? Yeah, you just keep saying that. Like, you said that already. No, I already justified it. Oh, uh, like, you haven't convinced me as to whether <laughs> this is a... Like, you like didn't even know what question bagging, bagging was. Say that again. You didn't even know what question bagging was. Yeah, I do. What but is I did, it? Like, question begging is going to be, like, affirming the truthfulness of the conclusion and the premises. Isn't that what you did? No, I don't think it. that's what I did. Okay, read out loud premise three. Okay, so, hold on. Before I do that, you're going to agree that you were wrong on that I don't know what question begging is, right? Am I going to agree on that? Yeah. You said that it's when the premise is, or sorry, the conclusion is assumed in the premise, right? Mm-hmm. Something like that. What do you mean by assumed? I said when the truthfulness of the, of the conclusion is affirmed in one of the premises. Like it's like an identical proposition? No, not necessarily. Then what is it? Uh, well, maybe it could be the case that some premise is necessary if and only if, like, the conclusion is, uh, is, uh, is true. Sorry, some premise is true if and only if what? the conclusion is true. Premise is true if and only if the conclusion is true. Oh, so that you're saying it's materially... Uh, uh, yeah, so you're saying it's materially equivalent, or like a biconditional. Yeah, that could be one of the cases of I mean, question begging. Maybe, like, yeah, that would be, like... That would follow from what I mean by question begging. Yeah, but it's okay, just but, like, okay, okay. By question begging, gonna, I just mean like the conclusion is that, identical okay. to the premise. That's what I mean by question okay, begging. Okay, but you're gonna say you're gonna say that you were wrong on my not knowing what question begging is, right? You're gonna say that. Did I say that you didn't know what it was? Yeah, you did. 
Yeah, because you didn't, right? Earlier on, you said, if I say God exists, therefore God exists, that's not question begging, or something okay, along those lines. Like, uh, if you say that I don't know... Right, didn't you say that? Is. Okay, if we say that I don't know what something is, and I provide, like, a definition of that thing, is it not the case that you were, like, refuted? I mean, if you don't actually know how to apply the definition, then no. Can yeah, you if you don't actually... Yeah, yeah, so, look, if you can look up the definition, that's fine. The idea is, if... You don't, if you like misuse the, the term or the fallacy, then you probably just don't know what it is, even if you can define it properly. Right. Because okay. earlier on, you said, if I say God exists, therefore God exists, that's like, that's going to be a good argument. <laughs> I was like, dude, that's so dumb. <laughs> I didn't well, say not to get off track. Argument. I don't yeah, want to. Like, yeah, we should stay on track, but yeah, okay. I don't think you know what question Look, when you said, <clears throat> When you said question begging, is just when like some premise is identical to the conclusion. Do you take that to be like the only case of question begging or not? The only instantiation of the fallacy? Um, I'm not sure. I've not been prov provided You're a counter sure. no, I don't know. The answer would be no. Just shut up, question. No one is asking. <laughs> I'm just trying to move this along. I just want to get to the argument. Yeah, but turns, yeah, let's go no, no, no. Turns, yeah. turns, ha turns has to show like some kind of a honesty here, right? Oh, wait, so saying I don't know? Is dishonest? No, I don't no, know. No. Like maybe, maybe you could formulate that. some no, that. No. counter example. I don't know though. Okay, look. Are you saying okay? So is question begging instantiated in the argument via like some premise being identical to the conclusion? Yes, that's what I said. Now do you actually okay. want to like and why, address okay. the critique? Why should I, okay, why should I why is it the case that I should be motivated to accept that P four is identical to the conclusion? I'm talking about P three on P four. P three, yeah. Okay. So there does not obtain some degree of probability whereby F does not exist. That's just to say that it's impossible for F to exist. Yeah, or, I, sorry, I disagree with this like identity relation you're gonna you're like laying out. That's the logical equivalent. Yeah, I disagree okay. with the equality relation you're laying out. Oh, okay. So not po it's not possible um, for P to not be the case. Is that not just equivalent to necessary? No. What the? Oh, fuck? it's not. <laughs> okay, so what do you think? Like basic motor logic. Yeah, okay, let's do, okay, okay, hold on, hold on. So now you're saying question begging is just when oh the premise is just when the premise is identical to the conclusion, right? So for two things to be identical, I take but it, it can that be logically equivalent. Shut up. For two things to be identical, oh you take it that there's going to be an equality of properties, correct? Under Leibniz's law, is that your view or not? I don't agree with Leibniz's law. Why would anyone accept that? I'm asking you whether that's your view or not. No, that's He's not talking about the premises being logically okay, equivalent. Is, that's what. It, question, can you stop here, talking? Let me give you an example. Let me give an example. Telekinetic, since I don't think you know. If I no, say no, no, not no, not a, me, don't give me. If don't I give say me an not example. not a, is that the equivalent of just saying a? Yeah, obviously. Yeah. Okay. So that's basically what did you I did. Say, did, right? I, did I, you I say not not? You just added more simple to the equation. Did I say not? Did I not? Did I say not not contingent? Yeah. No, I didn't. Sorry. What was the question? Did I, okay, so you answered Dia yeah to a question you didn't even hear. Yeah, you said, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you said not possibly for P to not be the case, and you just agreed. Oh Look, did, I said, you agreed. You agreed I, with me. Did I say not not contingent, or did I say something else? You said it's not possible for P to not be the case. I said it's not possible for P to not be the case? That's right. Yeah, is that going to be tantamount to not not contingent under your view? What is not not contingent? Oh my gosh, it's not not P. It's just a double negation, right? Oh, but what? Dude, by P, I don't mean contingent. I just mean like a proposition. So not not P. What, what are you talking about? Look, um, okay. So what is inequality in relation to you? Um, whatever truth condition or the truth conditions for one thing, say A, is going to be the equivalent of not not A. Whatever reason you have to suppose to A, you have the exact same reason to suppose not not A. Look, is there so an answer to It's a, it's a relation of truth conditions. Look, when you say two objects are identical, what do you mean by that? Or two things are identical? I just told you. Yeah, they didn't That's what I mean by question. logically can you, equivalent. Can you, no, no, no. When you say, like, two things are identical, right? <laughs> I just told you. Okay, can you recharacterize your answer? So, you know what a truth condition is, right? A truth condition? As in, like, a condition under which some proposition may attain, like, a truth value? Well, it's the, yeah, sort of something like that, yeah. So... If I say not, not A, well, the same truth condition can be applied for A. Whatever motivation no, you have no, no, to say look, not, not A, provide, it's the same provide, motivation you have to say A. Provides, right. Provide the criteria for equality in a biconditional. Go ahead. What's that have to do with anything I just said? 
I just because I'm asking you something and you're not responding to it. I'm asking you to I know define. the answer. So okay. the answer two is things like are, if so I two say things are identical, like, two things are identical if value. and only if what? Yeah, when you say if and only if, that just means to say that they have the same truth value. That's the case under which is true in propositional logic. So if I say what? P no, 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 hold on, hold on. Q, okay, let me let me write this. Two things are identical. I'm sorry, you asked a question. I'm trying to answer. That's going to be true if P and Q is either both true, right, or they're both false. So did you have did you have an answer to my question rather than this like really weird? Okay, I still I'm still no 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 I'm still trying to grasp your answer here. <laughs> You're saying two things are identical if and only if they have the same truth value. Is that what you said? The conditions under which it makes it true. Yeah. Those being truth makers, for instance. Yeah, you can call them truth conditions. You can call them truth makers. Yeah. Okay, like it's gonna be nonsensical to say that, uh, like two linguistic locutions are identical. Uh, because they have like sim or identical truth makers, because it seems like you're making what I ask you to do is to provide a definition of equality, right? Not a definition of equality between propositions. Like I'm asking you to provide a definition of equality in general, like a general rule, not just one index to propositions. Y yeah, you can say that two propositions are identical if and only if they have same truth makers, right? But I'm asking you, what is equality relation or what is it, like the equality rule in general? It depends on what specifically you want, right? No, it doesn't. Yeah, it, well, I mean, it kind of does, right? If I say, like, well, what's the truth conditions for negation? That's different. That's, like, different from the truth conditions for conjunction. Right? Look, we're not talking about propositions here. I thought we were talking about propositions. Now we're not? I ask you to provide a general criteria. <laughs> right? Look, for instance, Leibniz's law is just going to say God. two things are identical if and only if they have identical set of properties, right? And I'm that's saying, right. what is going to be your formulation of the biconditional? Not as indexed right, to like, do you proposition. Have, do you actually have a response to this argument just begging the question? What you or do you, do you want to like go down this red herring that doesn't have anything yeah, this to do is, with it? This is actually the response. This is the response, but you're just not like, following. Why is it a response? What's the response to it being a question begging argument? Okay, because under your view, you said that the premise pre-3 is identical to C, which is something I disagree mm -hmm. with because I don't take equality relations to be like the same that you described it. Why not? Why do I take... So, here, oh, let me ask you ahead. this. And, let, and you agreed when I asked you if the truth conditions for not not A is equal to A. So are the truth conditions for not possibly not P the same Dude, as you're necessarily already, okay. you're, already assuming, you're already assuming that I'm in, in P3, here, I'm saying not not... Let's, stop, let's stop, break this down. Stop, stop, let's, stop, let's break this down. Look, you're so already assuming that in P3, not, I'm saying not not, not A. Possibly but let me not. just Let me just, like, utilize your rule here. You're saying yeah, go ahead. P3 is identical to C, if and only if... It, P3 includes an identical set of truth conditions or truth makers, right? Okay, and so what if I tell you that I take it that P3, uh, the truth maker of P3, is there being like some uh, cal calculated degree of probability whereby like some occurrence does not obtain, right? But I take... Well, you, you have like a different way to prove it. And yeah, you'd have, you'd have to give me the argument for that, which is what I asked for earlier. Okay, I take that the conclusion, the truth makers of the conclusion, are just going to be F obtaining in every possible world. Now, you're going to have to explain to me why is it the case that this truth maker of C is identical to the truth maker of P3 that I already like described. Wait, wait, wait. So did you say for P3, the truth maker is F obtains in all possible worlds? No, I said in, for C. That's for C. And what's the truth maker for P3? For P3, it's just going to be like a probabilistic calculation. Right. And so does that mean, so say that you get this epistemic probabilistic calculation, what mm -hmm. would that look like? What would that look like, you said? Yeah, so say you calculate what the probability. You would, it, would that just mean to say that it's impossible for it to not be the case? It's going to be like in the form of a probabilistic calculation. I don't know what you mean. When you say yeah, I, okay, sure, cool. But is that, isn't that just going to be like identical to it's impossible for P to not be the case? You mean it's going to be identical to right? F existing in all possible worlds? No. Oh, so when earlier when you agreed that I could reduce the premise to not possibly not P, now you disagree. I didn't agree with that, no. Okay. I never agreed. Oh, you, did, you didn't. Guys, didn't he agree to that? <laughs> uh, oh, sorry, he agreed to what? He agreed that um, for P3, it's just not possibly not P. I thought he agreed to that earlier. I, I thought, it, I mean, maybe he's saying he doesn't anymore. Um. You changed your mind, okay. It just no, looks like P3 is saying... I'm pretty sure I've never said that. But it looks like P3 is saying that there is no chance, so there's no degree of possibility, probability where 
F does not exist. It just sounds like saying um, not F is impossible. Like, what, what yeah, that's just what it's saying. Yeah. That's what I was pointing out. Okay, are you going to respond to what I said? Look, well, that is just, a probability calculus? Yeah, so what's the argument You're just that? committing yourself to, like, a possible world semantic being identical to, like, a possibility semantic. Or, like, a probability semantic, rather, sorry. Oh my yeah, god. Yeah, so if you say it's... No, 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 no. If you say it's it's 100% probability of this not happening, that means that necessarily this doesn't happen, right? So that uh, is identical. It's say, look, it's saying it's 100% probability of it happening in reverse. Because it says it does not obtain some degree of probability or probability. Do, do you agree not. with what I said, yes or no? Can you repeat what you said? So you don't even know what I said, and then you tried to respond. Okay, so let me tell you what I said, since you don't know. So if I say it's impossible, or sorry, if I say that there's a 100% probability against P, doesn't that just mean to say necessarily not P? No, it doesn't. Okay, then what is that? Yeah, that means in all possible worlds, P is not the case if I say 100% probability against, right? No. There's, uh, there's okay, what does that mean then? What does that mean, probability, then? I don't know what that means, then. Probability, look, P3 is just invoking a probabilistic calculation, like a semantic of probability. But the conclusion here <laughs> is, is reducible to, like, a possible world semantic, right? And I take it that, at least on, like, the intuitive level, I intuit some kind of a semantic separation between the two. Even though you may take them to be, like, maybe you take P3 to be entailing something identical to the, con to the conclusion. I'm not sure whether that's your, your view or not. But I take it to be P3 to be different from the conclusion, for reasons I've already provided, right? Did you have an answer to my question? Yeah, I had. But I'm not going to repeat it. What was my question? No, I'm not going to repeat your question or the answer. So you don't even know my question. So my question was, what does probability mean? I didn't ask yeah, for you to go I, on this random, I didn't ask for you to go on this random little rant about how you already think that it's distinct. I asked you for the distinction. Yeah, and explain the distinction, right? Oh my what God. is the distinction? Did you, not, did you not understand the answer? What what is the distinction? But you can just you can you can just say that you don't understand like what's being said and I'll like rearticulate. Right? <laughs> Everyone, so turn. No, no one understands you, dude. You're just like gibbering left and right. Like, look, do you actually have an answer to my question? Yeah, you're asking me to provide like a definition of probability. Yeah. So what's the answer? Okay, the probability is just the likelihood of some occurrence to occur or to to obtain. So if I say that there's a zero out of 100 probability, that means that it's not going to happen. In all possible cases in which it could happen, it's not going to, right? In all possible cases in which it could happen? What do you mean? Mm -hmm. Are you serious right now? You don't know what that means? So possible yeah, just means to say, like, it could be the case that this happens, right? But in all possible cases in which it could happen, it just, like, doesn't, right? Like, say, say there's a zero out of seven probability that it rains this week or something. That just means that's not going to happen, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so in all possible worlds, it doesn't happen, right? In all possible worlds, that's not necessarily the case, no? Why? Oh, God. Because probabilistic calculation is going to be contingent on certain circumstances that will differ in possible worlds, in other possible worlds. So what? What? What'd you say? So yeah, what? I don't see why. Like, I, my analysis okay, is probably, okay. if, if you say, if you say it's a possible world. If there's a possib probability of 0% of rain this week, mm -hmm. right? That's going to be contingent on the weather conditions you have in your actual world, so right? But in some other possible worlds, that means it's going to be different other conditions. Right? What did you say? That means it's physically impossible under this set of conditions for that to happen this week, say. Yeah, physically impossible. Yeah, maybe, I guess. Okay, so it is impossible. Okay, thank you. No, 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 no. Doesn't no, no, matter hold on. In some, in some other possible world, it's hold on. Impossible. Some other possible oh, worlds where you may have long. different physical constitutions of of the world or like of the universe right you may have it otherwise wait turns i just want to say like this guy's like literally just weaseling and wasting just tell him to give you the form of shut his up, the argument shut up bro shut up just just yeah i do just yeah talk. i do want the form of the argument but he doesn't have the form for some reason if he doesn't yeah, have I the form just, do just, just like because all he's doing right now is you will try to get clear in the form he'll just start gibbering yeah, and weaseling away like just this? tell him to tell you what the form is i already did but he said that he didn't have it yeah, I mean, I just wouldn't waste Mark, any more time. Like, if he doesn't moderate. have, if he doesn't Look, even know the on, form, this is what is he? Question begging, right? And we are, and I already told you that this is going to reduce down to some sort of like on, um, on, possible we were, we were world semantics. We were discussing it's something. To, sorry, I didn't interrupt. We were discussing you. something that it seems very important. Right? But now you're going to be diverging. It's going to reduce down to some possible world semantics. Whenever we say something like it's 
probably not going to be the case, right? There's a 0% probability out of 100, say, mm-hmm. that this is going to happen. That means that it's, an, it, that it's impossible. And he conceded that for the rain example. It's going to be impossible physically for the rain under those conditions. You're, you're, removing, you're removing a modifier you use just to like persuade people. We what? Like you said, it's going to be physically impossible, right? But I said in some other possible oh, worlds, wherein you may have that's like still, a dude, that's, that's still a modality, dumb dumb. Physical respond. possibility is still a modality. That's a modal scope, dummy. Look, when I say, okay, <laughs> when I say that it's zero percent, it's zero percent likely to rain, like today, mm-hmm. right? If I say that, that's going to be contingent on like uh like weather conditions, right? You can you can have so, uh, you can have it. You can have it so as to like weather conditions. Yeah, no well, one asks you whether it's contingent on weather conditions. We ask okay, you, yeah, yeah, is sure. it going to be the case? Shut is up. it going to be the case? Weather, that weather, it condi- is. weather conditions yeah, 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 are going to yeah. be. So is it going to be the case? You may have, you may have the different weather conditions in other possible worlds, worlds right? So now, you said yes. in this example you, you gave, yes. it doesn't seem to be the case so that would be a question like, any right form now. of modal status actually corresponds to like probability, right? You already agreed. What are you talking about? Oh my gosh, this guy is like insane. Here, let me ask you two questions. Do you think, do you think that um, physical modality is a mo- form of modality or possible world semantics? Physical modality, you said? Yeah. What does that mean, physical modality? It's physically impossible, say, for P to obtain. As in, it, it, it is like nomolo- nomologically impossible. Yeah, that's mean? right. Uh, like, is that going to be identical to like, a possible world semantic? Yes. Not necessarily. What? <laughs> Okay, why? Because I guess you can have different nomological constitutions in all the possible worlds. Yeah, but nomological possibility literally just says what is possible under these sets of conditions, which is physical conditions. Yeah, right. As in the few, like an actual world. Right. That that's possible world semantics. Those, Look, those are like d- literally. Hold on. Do you disagree that like in some possible worlds there exists like another nomological constitution? Um, logically possible, yeah, you can have different things. Is sure. that a yes or a no? Do you disagree or no? That's a yes. Under logical possible, yeah. Do I dis- you said, is it possible that, like, the set of uh, nomological laws that we have could have been otherwise? Is that what you said? Uh, yeah, impossible world semantics. Um, logical modality, sure. Okay. Are you saying yes, as in you disagree? What do you mean? No, it could have been otherwise under logical modality. Okay, so you just like refuse yourself. How? Because earlier you were saying that like nomological modality or like just something to be nomologically impossible is going to entail that it is going to be like impossible in all possible worlds, right? But now you're yeah. saying that nominological constitution differs from one possible world to another, right? I just said that it's a possible world semantic, and if we say necessarily not P, and the modal scope is, say, physical modality, are like you, necessarily, are you going, are you going to agree that you were wrong on that? Are you going to agree that you were wrong on that? Right. Are you going no? to agree that you were wrong on that? Clarifying what I meant. No. Are if you I going say to necessarily agree? Necessarily, people can't oh, fly. If and if I'm referencing physical modality, well, under all. World accessible to this world, it is impossible. Right? Yeah, okay, now, so that, now would reduce, gonna, that would reduce. That would that reduce. That would be like invoking yeah, some yeah, kind that of would reduce, ad hoc rescue. That would reduce okay. to um. That would reduce mm-hmm. the modality. Right. right. That does okay. reduce the modality. Are you gonna? Okay. So are you so gonna agree that you're wrong? It doesn't matter if there's not? like a greater scope under which this could be stated as impossible, or sorry, uh, otherwise or contingent. That doesn't matter. As long as there's a scope or a modal scope under which this is said to be necessary, then my argument goes through. Right, and then I can symbolize your argument literally as the analytical equivalent as P three as the conclusion, and then it's question begging. Okay, are you going to agree that you were wrong on that or not? No, because I was. You're I just, just gave be, you the explanation. You're just going to keep like being dishonest. This isn't going to work. I gave out. you the explanation. What was my explanation? I didn't listen to your explanation. It's going to be like okay. So, and you're saying I'm dishonest? Holy crap, dude! Oh my gosh. I don't even, if you're not even going to listen to what I say, then I don't really have much else to say. Look, I just didn't listen to your explanation because, like, you already said, you already said that poss- other possible worlds may have, like, different nomological constitution, right? Which just contradicts, like, the other proposition you said earlier. No, it doesn't. What's the contradiction? Okay, you said that other possible worlds has, ha- may have other nomological constitutions, right? Mm-hmm. You also said that... If you have a nomologically impossible occurrence, that occurrence is going to be nomologically impossible in all possible worlds. In all worlds accessible to, yeah, to us, yeah. 
That's right. In all worlds accessible? Yeah, do you know what an accessibility principle is? Uh, what do you mean? So no if I say this ac- world is accessible to my world, that just means to say that it has the exact same nomological laws. Right. Okay. So I already clarified this. As long that's as I can say... Your, yeah, your, uh, that's not ad hoc request, you dumb dumb. As long mm-hmm. as I can say that these sorts of nomological laws, like say if I say the, the rain example, right? It's a 0 out of 7% chance it rains. It's nomologically impossible, which means to say it's necessarily not the case that it's going to rain. So, so you can symbolize that as the box and then negation symbol not, right, P, or sorry, R for rain. So that would be something that you can quantify in a modal sort of way, right? You can have a modal scope for that. You can have a modal um, operator, that's the word, for that. And it doesn't have to be the case that in all possible worlds, it's not the case, right? It just has to be in all possible worlds under this specific modal scope. So that's not going to refute my argument against P3 and the conclusion. So I don't think you're tracking that. <laughs> just because it's just because going to be like introducing some kind of a categorical nuance on how you like construe the notion of like some occurrence obtaining in all possible worlds, that doesn't mean that I would be like just committed to it just because you stated it, right? That should seem obvious. What's that have to do with what I said? Does that not respond to what you said? I'm not even really sure if I know what you said, or if I understand it. <sighs> okay. I'm just not sure how that responds. I just said that, just because you're going to be like introducing some kind of a nuance, in saying that no, uh, what it means for something to exist in all possible worlds, is just what it, it's just like equivalent to... Come on, get it out, get it out. Existing, something existing to, in all possible worlds, <laughs> accessible, or like, in some possible worlds, that like, obtain in some relation such that, we stand in some relation to this possible world, that doesn't mean that I'm committed to such a, like, a restriction, like, such a nuance, right? So what? Like, look, you would be committed to this sort of, like, this symbolic analysis of of modal logic that I said for your premise three, right? Like, look, if you say it's it's so improbable, right, which you didn't even clarify the modal scope, but metaphysical modality said, if that's what you're operating under, and you say, if there's a zero out of 100% chance um, which is just to say a 0% chance of this happening uh, under metaphysical modality, that just means it's impossible because in all metaphysical domains, it doesn't obtain, right? So that would be like the correct analysis. And then my, um, so your response to my physical modality or nomological scope, I mean, that doesn't like matter, right? Like you can say there's a greater scope under which it could be said that it's possibly not the case, right? These nomological laws. Like, maybe it just rains, like, logically as possible. There's no contradiction, right? Which I'm fine with. There's still a modal scope that, um, that would apply here, right? So, so that's saying, not Are you saying there's going to be, like, a nominological scope of modality? Like, a separate nominological scope? It just seems Picture like this, right? Picture you have two circles. One of the circles is smaller than the other. And then there's a bigger circle that encapsulates the smaller circle. The smaller circle is the nomological laws or the nomological modality we currently have. Logical modality is the bigger circle that encapsulates it, okay? That's basically what I'm saying. Now, there can be a greater scope, but that doesn't matter, right? Because it's still, like, impossible, once you go to the lesser scope, to, say, make a pig fly, right? But it's not logically impossible. So I can still symbolize, in logic, necessarily pigs don't fly, or something. Right? There's no issue with that. So, I don't know if you actually had a response. (laughs) Look, are you, <clears throat> did you have a response to what I said to my counter objection I said earlier? Which one? Okay, hold on. I said that. Uh, what is it? I said that uh, just because you're going to be like introducing some kind of a separate scope for like modal logic, right? I'm not going to be like necessarily committed to it just because you're saying it. You're just saying uh, like nominological constitution could be like extended to such an extent that. Uh, like you may have like this ensemble of possible worlds sharing like a nominological system, right? Which, which under your semantics just means that uh, like some objects, if it exists in all possible worlds, it exists in all like nomologically identical worlds or like nomologically oriented mm-hmm. worlds, right? Yeah, but that's yeah. that's not something I'm going to be like committed to. I don't I don't even know why you're going to be like introducing this kind of. You agreed with me, dumb dumb. No, I didn't. I asked you earlier, and you agreed with me, right? I asked you. If there's a zero per, out of seven percent chance, or sorry, a zero over seven chance in the days of the week that it'll rain, um, could you say that it's necessarily not the case that it'll rain? And you said, yeah, under some contingent condi- conditions, right? And I asked you, what are those conditions? You said nomological conditions. 
So this is what you said. I don't know right. about all your background. When I, look, when I said it's going to be, no, well, what I said earlier, that <laughs> it's going to be like phenomenological, what I meant is that it is going to be like, uh, it's not going to occur in the, in, uh, in the actual world, right? Because the, the phenomenological system of the actual world just prevents it from occurring, right? But that doesn't, that doesn't mean it's going to be like necessary to... Super, super, uh, super. Oh my god. Okay, what? <laughs> don't do that. Do what? Do what? Yeah, so you had a response to what I said. That's cool. You can repeat it, but I already re like responded. Like, do you want to like go in a circle and we can just like say it all over again? <laughs> like, what's interesting with that? Do uh, you find that funny? But yeah, I think it's kind of funny that you just want to like repeat the conversation all over again. <laughs> it's gonna be like funnier when you like lack the capacity to understand like what Beat it up. Said, as objections. Beat it up. Did you just say beat it up? I said speed it up because you're so slow. <laughs> right. I'm the one that's being slow. <laughs> How were you being what? slow? Because you Why is the other like guy laughing like it would be <laughs> really funny when this happens to uh, you because well, that's how you were speaking and you uh, like you just wasted your time with this idiot for the last yeah, like, 20 minutes oh. there's like nothing more that can be said mm, okay Mikey boy this dude this is like intellectually impoverished <laughs> hmm. but how, how about yeah. this how about like, you? You, you can have the conversation again. Just give us the form of the argument. Like, give yeah, us the form of the I argument, just, and then it. repeat the conversation. It. I wrote it. Oh, where is it? Okay, I'm gonna send it to you. I'll, I'll actually just send like the full document I've been creating. That's a blank PDF. I don't see anything there. Are you retarded? That's literally a blank page. Do you have Adobe? Do you have Adobe like Acrobat? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Please, please. Wait, is this going to be the same document that you sent earlier? Because oh, we're, now we're talking about the argument that you were this discussing with Karen. Look, do you have Acrobat or no? I don't think this, oh, does, this doesn't like open in Google. Oh, I don't know, just send, send a PDF that doesn't require Acrobat to open. Do you actually, do you even know the form of the argument? Yeah, I do. Well, why can't you just you, like, post it? In, it? Like, just, can you give, like, no, just post it or something? No, just post it in the chat. You don't have to send a PDF. Just, like, post the form in the chat. Okay. That's where all the issues are coming from. I mean, I think basically, I think turns is basically done, but that's because it's like retard is gibberating and not like wasting time. Monkey boy, were you uh, paying attention to that? Okay, cool. It's, it was pretty Wait, funny, yeah. Should Waffle, why don't you just post the form in, like, just post the form in the chat is one thing. Bro, it's just, li it's literally there. Are you, like... No, you sent... No, it's you not. Sent a PDF. You sent a PDF. I'm asking the form. I'm saying the form of the argument you're discussing with turn. Oh, yeah, by the way, Mason, have you seen, um, Infinity versus Synth? That shit was so funny. Um, yeah, yeah I saw that. Surprised. The, what do you think? The form is in the PDF. Right? I mean, I mean, Infinity got embarrassed, obviously, but. Uh... <laughs> Sorry, what were you saying? I said the form is in the PDF, idiot. Oh, waffle, you you haven't posted. Wait, wait, just one second. You haven't posted the form in the chat. What are you talking about? It's in the PDF, you idiot. Fucking okay, idiot! You, you the PDF. When we open the PDF, retard, it gives us a blank document. Copy hey, the form hey, from hey, the hey, PDF hey, hey. and Tell paste kinetic. it in the chat. Idiot. <laughs> Telekinetic. Can you quickly tell me um, the form of Modus Tolens? Modus Tolens? Mm-hmm. 
P implies Q, non Q, therefore non P. Just what's where's the argument for? Just just put, take copy from the PDF, put it in the chat.